Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video, we're going to be talking about plantar fasciitis. This is a disorder of the plantar fascia, which is the connective tissue which supports the arch of the foot. Although the cause of plantar fasciitis isn't clear, the risk factors involved are excessive exercise, like from running, obesity, and long periods of standing up. Other risk factors include those with high arches of the feet, tight Achilles tendon, or those who have flat feet and tend to roll them inwards when walking or running. They are also susceptible. Essentially, the cause and risk factors are when there is some kind of imbalance which increases the amount of tension placed along the plantar fascia. The signs and symptoms of plantar fasciitis include sharp pain. It's usually unilateral, so it's usually on one foot rather than both at the same time. Pain is often noted during the first few steps of the day, or after long periods of sitting down and then getting up and walking around, and then symptoms tend to improve as you continue to walk throughout the day. Other symptoms include numbness, tingling and swelling in the area. Now let's have a look at the plantar fascia area. The plantar fascia is this thick band of connective tissue here, and it originates from the medial tubercle and the anterior part of the heel bone. The fascia then extends along the sole of the foot before inserting at the base of the toes, and it supports the arch of the foot. More recent findings suggest that plantar fasciitis is not caused by inflammation. Instead, over a period of time, it suggested that due to repetitive micro tears, we see a structural breakdown of the plantar fascia instead of an inflammatory process. So because of this, the academic community are wanting to rename plantar fasciitis to plantar fasciosis. If you looked at a plantar fascia under the microscope which is affected, you would see mycomatous degeneration, connective tissue calcium deposits, and disorganized collagen fibers. Because of this disruption in the plantar fascia, normal movement is limited due to structural breakdown, and we start to see excessive strain on the calcineal tuberosity, and this seems to contribute towards the development of plantar fasciitis. The diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is based on current symptoms and associated risk factors. The inner aspect of the heel bone would be palpated, and it may be tender and causing pain. We can also see limited dorsiflexion, and this may also cause pain due to stretching of the plantar fascia. The treatment of plantar fasciitis is usually non-surgical and we start to see improvement within six months with continued rest, elimination of risk factors, so reducing exercise or losing weight, and management with massage, heat, ice, and some actually take non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs for the management, but this isn't always going to be effective. If the treatment doesn't work, then extracorporeal shockwave therapy is considered where it's expected to have pain relief up to a year. This is a procedure where shockwaves are passed through the skin to the injured part of the foot. The shockwaves are mechanical and they are not electric shockwaves. They are audible low energy sound waves which work by increasing blood flow to the injured area. This helps to speed up the body's healing processes. Other ways of treatment and management can be with corticosteroid injections, however it's not considered to be a long-term solution. And the last resort, if there is no resolve from any of the above methods of treatment, we have the surgical approach, which is plantar fasciotomy. And this is where the plantar fascia is cut in areas to relieve tension. 